Hi everybody, thanks for clicking that video link. I am Josh KI6NAZ. Today we're gonna to talk about repurposing a SDR Play RSP1A as a spectrum analyzer. Very cool free software. So if you already have one of these devices, you can probably already do it. Let's talk about it. So just as a quick background on this one, I was sitting around thinking about SDRs and I thought to myself, why can't they be used as a spectrum analyzer? Well, it turns out they can, and there's software that exists for that for different SDRs. But SDR Play on their website has a spectrum analyzer software that you can download for free and use it with your device. And so to make this easy and kind of put it in a nutshell, uh, the Nano VNA, right, the ne network vector analyzer, works on transmitting a signal down the line to whatever's under test. A spectrum analyzer, on the other hand, receives in the signals coming from the unit under test and then displays it on its bandwidth readout, its waveform. So there are two different tools that have different places in your shack for different purposes, right? The Nano VNA, useful for doing an antenna test. A spectrum analyzer is useful to see the output of like a transmitter, for example. And that's what we're gonna to demonstrate today. So I'm gonna start things off with a bit of a caveat. This is not a, you know, a high performance spectrum analyzer. It's a hundred dollar SDR that we're repurposing it with specialty software. You're still gonna get better, more accurate results with a proper spectrum analyzer. But are these results good enough for your purposes? Possibly, that's for you to decide. So before you plug anything into this guy, you need to understand a couple of things. If you plug this directly into this and keyed this up, you'd fry this, this board in here. So what we use is an attenuator like this one, an RF attenuator. This one is SMA 10 watts, 40 dB, and it's up to three giga, gigahertz, okay? So what this is telling us is that this attenuator will handle up to 10 watts of power output and attenuate it 40 dB. That is enough to protect the circuitry of this SDR unit, or now <laughs> this spectrum analyzer unit. So setting this up is pretty straightforward. Just make sure all your connections are tight. Again, you could use an SMA torque wrench if you had one. This is not as precision work. Just don't over tighten and don't under tighten. So with your radio on the other end here, oh, we're gonna need to change it up. Oh no, we won't, we'll just go directly into it. Sorry, I was thinking about the Baofeng for a second. Oh no, this is the same connector as the Baofeng, that's right. Anyway, so we get this all connected up, connect it to your SDR play. And then the USB goes to your computer. Simple. Okay, let's take a look at this SDR play software. We'll go ahead and run it off the desktop and go full screen. And we're looking at a 500 megahertz span I've got the center frequency at 350. By the way, same thing with SDR Play. You can scroll the wheel when you're highlighted on it. 350 is important in a second. I'll explain that. And the range, I've got to 120. I have a no reference offset. And we'll go ahead and start the SDR Play. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on clock spur removal. That will take care of the clocks that will show up as little ticks. And we'll start to get an even representation. I'll also enable markers, which will make sense in a second when I give it uh, some actual signals to read. You'll get these cool little peak bubbles. So those are the peak bubbles right there, which I don't know what's going on on this left side here, but we'll wait for it to cycle through. Now, one downside of using an SDR is that it's incredibly slow. See how slow this is rolling? So hopefully this should clear out, and it does. Okay, okay. so I'm going to go ahead and transmit with the Yesu FT4X right now. We got a really slow span, so I'm gonna key down right now as we start up on the left-hand side. We should get 146.420, there it is. And then we should start seeing harmonics pop up and disregard those first couple of little spikes. There's the first harmonic and the second, and we're waiting on a third. Or not, let's let it go all the way to the end. If we do, 
There we go. Okay, so the first one is negative 3 dB at 146.460, which is a little bit off, but we're looking for the dB reading. And if you remember, uh, I'm using a 40 dB attenuator. So we're putting out roughly 37 dB of, of transmitted power. Okay, and if you go to the next one, that's 61, which is, um, again, you just need to be below 40. And this guy is a spur, and actually, this was the second. Nope, boop, 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 boop. Uh, so this is the second harmonic, which is 53, which um, if you do, again, the math, so if you go, there's 10, 20, 30, 40, this technically passes the FCC guidelines because it's, it's under the required dB level from the primary frequency. Um, of note, though, uh, you're supposed to be under 26 dB from the noise floor, which in this case is about 70. So if you go up, that's 10, almost 20. So this also is passing. So we expect that a YAC radio is probably going to pass the harmonics check as far as uh, your uh, spurious harmonics that your radio is creating. Let's throw the FT, oh, the, um, no, let's do the BFF8HP, the Baofeng. All right, so now I have a BFF8HP connected, and we are going to go ahead and key up once it gets to the end of that screen, and then we'll have it cycle through once more, and we'll capture. Uh, we want those peak values, though. There's the primary. There's your first harmonic. First harmonic. Second. Third. Now, I will note that we are getting a couple of uh, spurs here, here, and here. But uh, let's go ahead and look at them. So same thing with the Yesu. Let's go back to the previous one. OK, so negative 3 dB, right, uh, against the, just call it negative 75 that we have. So that's full power output on the Baofeng. But then your first one here, so this is your first harmonic which is this guy, 59 dB. Uh, that's 59 dB minus 3, negative 3 dB, which is below 45. However, this next one, 46, so let's do the math, 1, 2, 3, 4, probably not uh, compliant. This one is outside of SEC spec, and if you go to the next one, this one's probably borderline one, two, three, four, uh, right there, four, and a little bit of change there. So this one's probably in spec, but these are both above uh, or close to 26. So even though this breaks the 40 dB mark for difference between the transmit frequency and the harmonic, it's breaking that law or rule. It is not breaking the 26 dB above the noise floor. Um, so whatever, it's still out of spec, just barely. Um, this one does, this one qualifies, but it doesn't matter if you have one harmonic that's out, then you're technically not passing. So this is just a quick example of, of how to use this. There is a wealth of controls here, and there is a little manual that goes along with it that's that's pretty useful. So I recommend it, and you know, just like the uh, SDR plays, you hit stop, and it stops it, hit start, and start, starts it, you get the idea. So I found that fascinating. I love repurposing kit you already have in new and interesting ways. And using an RSP1A from STR Play as a spectrum analyzer is super, super cool. Admittedly, this is not a high performance, fine tune instrument for this job. We are repurposing an STR receiver. So those little odd spurs that you get, uh, there's probably a way to sort that out. Like I said, there is a manual. Manual's really good, you should check it out. But I'm sure you can adjust things and make it a little bit better. Uh, I will be doing a deep dive on uh, HTs that I own. The QST put out a really interesting article in January talking about their dealings with Baofengs and how they don't follow the FCC guidelines with their harmonics that they put out. And again, kind of what we're talking about to, to make it simple, 
when you're transmitting on that frequency you believe you're transmitting on, the radio doesn't have filtering in it and it's creating spurious emissions further down the bands that you're operating on. Actually, it's outside the band you're operating on and that can be picked up by other radios in other areas. Is it a large portion of your transmitted power? Not really, but it is not technically meeting the FCC guidelines. So that is something to think about when you do decide to buy a radio. How spectrally pure is it? Are you following the FCC guidelines? And that's a decision you have to make. Uh, I, again, I will do a follow-up video going into this to some detail, so I hope you click that subscribe button, click the bell so you get notified because it's most likely going to be a live stream. So if you find this interesting, hopefully you will think about checking it out. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. It really does help and uh, it works that YouTube magic that has been going on recently. So thank you all for the support watching the videos. If you're curious about any of this, check the comments below, leave me a message or reach out to me on Discord and Facebook. The links for all that are in the description. And I uh, will be posting everything I bought to make this happen on Amazon. So the SDR Play, the attenuator, and all your connection cables that you need to make this work are all available on Amazon and it's relatively inexpensive. So if you already own an, S an RSP1A, you can probably already make this work. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'll talk to you later. See ya. things a very cool oh my light just went out hey everybody thanks for clicking that video link i'm josh ki6naz and today we have the police driving by with their sirens welcome